This is the Everyone Podcast with Adam and Luke. As we talk everything Formula One motor racing. G'day and welcome to Effing One Podcast, Australia's only Formula One podcast. And from England, we went to Hockenheim. Hockenheim, Germany. But das, was was das? What was going on? Vettel, relax. Don't get upset. It's just a wall. And after all, hey, love conquers all, man. <laughs> Somehow... Sebastian, you managed to lose the unlosable race. It was uh, turning out to be quite an uneventful race till at around lap 15, um, all hell broke loose. This race was a tale of German heartbreak, sprinkled with team orders and a whole lot of luck for the winner. Lewis, love conquers all douche canoe Hamilton with the team order twin fins, second and third. Valtteri... Let him, let him now through, Bottas, please. Uh, second. And Kimmy, just say it. I'm a patsy. Raikkonen. <laughs> but to tell us the whole story, we need to turn to a man that feels most at home when he's got a mouthful of German sausage. <laughs> Luke. Luke. Luke, by the way, can I just say, love the Transylvanian Count Dracula outfit that you're wearing right now. Whoa. <laughs> it's frightening, <laughs> but it's awesome. Thank you. Uh, These are uh, actually my own teeth. They are. Mm. It's a weird that you've got those eye teeth that are so long. It's kind of creepy. Uh, of course, being Transylvania being part of Hungary, it's actually an area of Hungary. Yep. I did some Googling. You did. It's amazing. Um, and yes, if you're wondering, this is the traditional Matt Yo folk costume, including the shirt with the wide and long, richly embroidered sleeves, uh, the embroidered male apron that I'm wearing, and my hi hat. That's some beautiful embroidery. Thank you. I can only appreciate good embroidery. It took a long time to get it like this, Luke. I was up all night. Um, and it is the perfect combo of formal and folk. As is tradition at FE1 Podcast, we have to wear the native costumes of the featured race, the next race being Hungary. Uh, and this is, of course, a post-Germany and pre-Hungary uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. But before we get to Hungary... Because we're always hungry. Mm. You and I, we're always hungry. Mum's got us catered. Has she? she Did she does. bring some good stuff? It's amazing. Damn, your mother. Damn, Mrs. Luke, <laughs> you evil temptress. First, we need to dissect Germany. Why are German people so crazy? What a race. What a controversial, kind of tragic. It was like a Greek tragedy, but yet it a was. German tragedy. It was. There hasn't been enough German tragedies in the last hundred years. Good call. Add another one. Good call. Well, overdue. Let's look at qualifying first, Luke. Mm. Um, highlight being, of course, Dan oh. had to take a penalty. <laughs> he was right at the back. That, no, that wasn't my highlight. But well, yes. No, it wasn't a great My highlight, highlight was Lewis. Lewis mm. um, making a mistake, blaming it on the hydraulics. <laughs> but he It already broke. That's how I drive all the time, Hamilton. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go through qualifying. Who looked good? Who didn't look so great in qualifying? Well, Sebastian Vettel looked very good. The yes. finger boy was on form. Yep. He was very happy with how the car was handling. Uh, Lewis Hamilton was not so happy. He he had a bit of a bit of a wide angle at turn one. He mm. was asked after qualifying, "Do you think that it was you running wide what caused?" Your issue? And he's like, no, I've been running out there all weekend. <laughs> don't think you have, son. I don't think that's how you got over that bump. He said the steering had broken. The team really didn't back it up post quali. Maybe later on they'd said that, yes, it had affected his steering. Yep. Um, and, yeah, he, he was told to stop the car. Stop the car. No, it's trundling. Oh, okay. F1 cars are supposed to trundle along, are they? <laughs> What I find funny is when your team tells you to stop the car, <laughs> the people who have designed, engineered, and made your car are telling you, you need to stop because you could do irreparable damage to your car. And you go, no, no, I've got this. Yeah. And what, what Should this just be called the Lewis Hamilton team and they just have to do what he says? Yeah, yeah. It does so, seem that way, doesn't it? As he was trundling along yeah. from the exit of turn... One, he made all his way down to turn 10 before he was decided to get out of the car. And then he decided to push it. 
in a comical sense. <laughs> he probably had a few hundred meters to go, and everyone else is trying to qualify. Yeah, but he's like, no, no, no. I, I got. got I got to put. I got to push it back. Don't I, mind me. I got this. Imagine if someone did that to him. They were on a quali lap, and then someone else is pushing their car, and Lewis is trying to get a quali lap. He has to go slower through yellow flag center because some douchehead yeah. is pushing his car back. He would. He wouldn't be very happy with no. that. No. No. And they weren't going to wait for him to push the car all the way back, and so he. The, the marshals weren't going to steer it any further. They're like, no, we're going to push this into the, the barrier. And he's like, no, no, no. He tried to steer it back onto the track. And after qualifying, he's like, oh, yeah, I noticed that the car was leaking. So I, I turned the car to the side. <laughs> like, no, you didn't. You were running alongside it in an attempt that you would let them push it all the way back to pit lane. Yeah. And you would occasionally turn the steering wheel to suggest such until they stopped pushing. And then when they've pushed the car back behind the fence, you've realized that's when you saw the leak. You ain't going anywhere. Right. When your team says it's a hydraulic leak, it's a hydraulic problem, shut it off. Turn it off. You're just going to do damage. That It could cost you more penalties. Jump on the moped. Just get back to the garage. Don't be a douche. But no, we, he sat beside his car and blubbered away and probably spoke to God and God spoke to him and said, just. it's okay, my son. Yeah. You will be redeemed. He's got a higher power. He has. That's in charge. So Daniel Ricciardo clearly hasn't been praying to the right God. Correct. He got an engine penalty, which, funnily enough, I have some news about that, which Ooh. I found out this, oh, hello. this morning. Yeah. Uh, the Renault, he was he wanted to put a new internal combustion engine in. They I think you're going to say Mercedes-Benz engine or no. a Ferrari engine in there. They wanted to put a brand new engine in, and that's what everyone thought was going to happen. Yep. Take the penalty now before hungry. You don't yep. want to take an engine penalty there. Yep. Renault said, no, we're not going to give you a new engine. You don't need it. What? Yep. So they changed some electrical parts, an MGUK, an MGUH. And whoa, some whoa, whoa, hang parts. on. So, but they're a customer. They're buying these engines. Mm. So you, you don't buy a, a hot cross bun from the shop. And they go, no. Sorry. No. You can't have that hot cross bun. No, you but don't I just need paid, it. I just paid for it. No, no, no. You don't need it. You don't need You're it. You're clearly too chubby. Yeah. You don't need it. What the fuck? Yeah, so that's what they did. That's what I read this morning. I had no idea. That uh, Red Bull frustrated by Renault. Uh, he's, he wanted a new ICE. They're like, you he don't. took the penalty for it. He, that's well, what he, he was going to take for. penalties for a couple of things that needed to be changed. You thought. Why does not change it get, all? Let's get the and whole that's thing. what they've done before. And then Renault's gone, no, you don't need it. Like, but I do. Oh, you're kidding me. So my concern is there's nothing that's come out in the news so far that Ricardo will have to, because they don't know, they haven't made public what's happening to Ricardo for the Hungarian Grand Prix. In terms because, of penalty for another engine? Yes. So they didn't give him a new engine, so he didn't get to run the new engine. So what we don't know what was the issue. Was it a turbo failure? Was it an MGUK, MGUH? Was it electrical? We don't know why his car stopped. He just said it's loss of power. They said pull the car over, stop the car. And he did it, unlike Lewis. He just pulled over and stopped the yeah, car. Yeah, that's what you do. That's what you he do. doesn't have God on his side. That's clearly that's true. must be that's it. That's true. Uh, but yeah, so I'm concerned that this was going to be Red Bull's best chance at another win this year, being at hot, at hunger, the Hungara ring. And so this was actually going to be part of my effing what because I cannot believe... You can't help yourself. You need to just get off your chest right I, now. I was like, and it's fair enough. How can you it's not... It's eating you alive. How can you... So this is effing what? Let's do a lot of... It's time for... Effing, effing what? what? <laughs> it's a little uh, early, but we like it. Yeah, I picked too soon. But yeah, I don't understand that you go, I, want a, I want a new engine and they go, mm, no. I didn't think they could do As that. As a customer, when you pay for something, that's you should get that thing in return. No, you don't need it. No engine for you. Come back. Why do you? Like the soup Nazi from what? Seinfeld. Yeah. What the hell? So in all seriousness, it looks highly likely he's going to be taking another penalty for a new engine now that Renault will say, oh, yeah, you probably need a new engine now. Oh, yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah. And Cyril Abitbull, the man who sounds like he's constantly chewing bubblegum. Absolute douchebag. Very hard to <laughs> understand him on the pit wall with his accent. Yep. Um, but he's like, you know, if we had a crystal ball, then we, we would have known that 
he would have had an, an engine malfunction. No, because we you didn't. Don't need we had no ball. data to say that. But you could have just given him a new engine. You just need half a brain. They've paid for a new engine. And give him the new engine. He said it wasn't due to a lack of availability. There was no situation with availability. First, we are really focused on spec C. So they've got a new engine coming out soon. And we are in between the two specs. And it's better to try and wait for spec C availability. Red Bull don't give a shit. They want spec B. Just give a me fresh the new engine. Give me the fresh new shit one. Yeah. When spec C comes, we'll probably get it around Monza. We'll look for it. And we'll take another it's... penalty for yeah. that as well. Because your engines are so rubbish. So but oh. they wouldn't give him a spec B. So that was that was my I cannot believe wow. that a, that an engine supplier's gone, we're not gonna give you what you want. Maybe, you, maybe if Renault was supplying them next year, they may have. Is this a little bit of political? Well, you don't want to choose us. It's a bit of conspiracy theory, but but as you you are a supplier, Renault, of the team, Renault aren't going to go out of their way to help Red Bull after the bad blood that has been spilt between these yeah. Renault and Red Bull. I get that. There's been a lot of championships won, but they're not going to go out of their way, and they're clearly proving that now. Renault is mm. proving they're not going to do anything to help Red Bull at all. And if I was Red Bull, I'd. After that move, can I they think- go to? Can they flip to Honda now? Can we just go? You know what? Let's just <laughs> that won't happen. Get it out of the way. But what I'd like to see Red Bull do is go. Okay, never mind. Signs back at Toro Rosso. Yes. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck that. Get him Sorry, out. Sorry, Carlos. There. You're going back with Gasly. Yep. Hartley. Hartley. See you later. You can go back to uh, is- Porsche. I think you just uh, discovered a conspiracy. Mm. Watch out for that. Because Watch I out believe for Saints to retaliate. We'll talk about the driver market later. Yeah, but I believe they may have a replacement for Signs if they can't get him. So you think are you saying that Renault's already prepared for them to mm. for Red They're Bull to for pull him Frenchman. back? Well, and there you go. Three to Another choose Frenchman. From. I've only oh. one. Oh, they're not going to. They've well, they'll have Hulkenberg next year. Because force too many. Mm. I'm sorry. There's not enough croissant. There isn't. There's not enough baguettes so we've got to feed them all. Ocon, Grosjean, and... Not Leclerc. He's... No, no. He's Monogas. Gasly. Gasly. So they'll be, they'll be looking those. at probably Ocon or Grosjean. Okay. To have a French fulfillment. You can have Grosjean. <laughs> <laughs> Take him if you like. No loss there for Haas. Oh dear. Asshole. Okay, well there you go. That's effing what. Uh, Sorry, was, I picked too soon. You did. That. It was an early one, but, but it was just. That's it, what you know. It for. was on the tip of my tongue, and I wanted to get it out. I want to have a vent because that's and, just not cricket. And that's why we love you, Luke, mm. because you are just you, leave, you. You wear your heart on your sleeve. So quality was good. Bottas. Yep. Pulled it out of the bag. Got mm-hmm. a provisional pole, and then Sebastian Fingerboy Vettel came out and did a perfect lap. Yep. And got pole. The crowd went wild. It's good to see. Germany only gets a race once every two years. Hockenheim may not be back in two years' time because of funding, but they had a really, really strong crowd. And I think all the drivers enjoyed it. It's a good racetrack. But I believe some of the photographers were saying that some of the facilities haven't been upgraded and they're a bit dilapidated. Yep. So unless they fix those things or they're maybe not putting money into it to invest in it, May not happen again. May not happen again. So um, off the off the lights, uh, it seemed like it was unlikely that Hamilton was going to make his way to the front. But a whole series of lucky, open. there's a lot of luck involved. There was a lot of open doors too. A lot of stuff. And that the happened. thing is, there, like Lewis started on the softs, um, and he made his way through pretty easily. There was no one fighting him. All the you know. I said it when I was watching I'm like, Daniel and Lewis will be in the top six. Mm. Simple. It's that much of a gap between yep. the top six and everyone else that yep. they're going to carve through everyone and make it up there. Daniel took a lot longer because he was on the mediums. I don't know why they put mediums on. I really don't think it was a wise choice. And clearly going by what happened and how long it took uh, Daniel to get past Alonso. Alonso was on the radio saying, watching uh, Ricardo, we're not going to go to the to the white wall um, yep. medium tires because it's not working for him and it's not going to work for us. Um, there was a, every tire out there, I think, hmm. at that 15 laps to go mark when the rain was coming down. Gasly was on a full wet. <laughs> what the hell? Why would you put him on? I don't know. It was only raining at 
Corner six. The interesting <laughs> thing is that Hartley and Gasly are in the same team. They're looking at the same radar. So when they're like, come in, and Hartley's like, no, no, I think I can do one more lap. Yeah. And then, so if they were going to pit anyone, they you know they might chuck Inters on. You can kind of see where they're coming from. They were just gambling. They were going, okay, we've got no chance to win. Here's a chance to do something ridiculous. We're the only ones with wet tyres. If it does bucket down in the next two seconds, mm. we've got a chance of picking up some points or winning it. It's interesting. A lot of, like Mercedes, it's the first time they've actually chosen right. They've actually had good um, radio strategy. They they messed up their last little bit with Lewis and saying, come in, come in, come in. Yes. Pit, box, yep. box, box. Yep. And then Lewis has gone, but Kimi's staying out. Kimi went in the next lap. Yes, that's so, right. And that's why Kimi lost the lead and when the restart happened and more lewis controversy when lewis decided not to go in the pits he crossed over the line on the grass mm. so the rule is you can't there's there was no precedent nothing like this had happened before where someone had entered the lane but still made it back onto the track and then pulled out and then made it back on the track well firstly that's day da- surely that's dangerous he was reprimanded didn't raikkonen do that Raikkonen did it in Azerbaijan and got penalised for doing it. But um, the it, it's where the pit in is sort of on the same straight, so he was running in pit lane where you're actually not allowed to. Yep. So he was on the line on entry. So there's no bollard there because it's technically the racetrack. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he he did the wrong thing. Um, but there's no precedent before Lewis what, with what he did. I think everyone was concerned. I was baffled. I'm like, how come you have to be right of the bollard to enter pit lane, but then you can leave pit lane and it's considered safe, but you can't go to the left of the bollard well, I and thought enter was... late. Yeah. Like trying to stop people just ducking in really late, but then you can duck out. Because it's setting a precedence. Yeah. So I, I dare say for future races, they did have a chat with him. They did reprimand him and say maybe you came onto the track a bit hastily, you didn't really look in your mirrors or... Right. Um, but no penalty as such. No penalty at all. Of course, God's on his side. Love, yeah. love conquers all. Love conquers all. If you look, I'm sure if you look at the the media release from the FIA, they're saying love conquers all. Yeah. So that's what their findings are. Um, should we give it's Lewis a penalty? Love conquers, love conquers all. all. End of story. Just drop it, guys, because yeah. love conquers all. Love and... conquers all. That's going to be the name of this episode. God loves Hamilton. Love um, Hey, some cool stuff happened in the race. You see Leclerc do that. That's beautiful. Three sixty pirouette. Yeah. I think it was rain had just come down, lost control, span, but whether it was sheer luck or just great control, didn't didn't miss a, a, a heartbeat. Just did a total spin, carried on in the same direction. I would have given it, it a amazing. perfect ten if he'd gear changed down. As he was spinning. Oh, okay. I think if he'd chose, if he'd gone down to like second or third as he was spinning, going, oh, I know what's going to happen here. But I'll give him See, like an eight and a half. I would have given him nine mm. had he have, after the spin, put his hands out presenting oh. outside the cockpit and then moved it up and celebrated with a, an air pump, <laughs> a, air, a fist in the air, like, yeah. You're the best. The best. The best. Punch in the air. Yeah. yeah. I like that. You always do like, like, like presenting. Like the Breakfast Club mm. in the last scene when he walks off and he yeah. punches the air. <laughs> Very much like that. That is a 9.5 for me. Yeah. But that he was, didn't. He didn't, but that's fine. Mm. But that was really cool. What else was really... There was some some sweet over... There was some great Racing. team orders. Oh. Oh, I've never seen such brilliant team orders. So clear, concise. I've, I've, I've written into a lot of um, job applications <laughs> yeah. and they say, is your communication clear and concise? <laughs> Yes, my communication is clear and concise. Yeah. yeah. Effective, it's to the point. Just. But not so for Ferrari. No, see, Raikkonen needed clarification. Yeah, he Raikkonen, did, it's not his first language. Yeah. Just, just, just tell me. Just tell me what? You want me to huh? spell it out for me? Yeah. Let's, hey. I want you to tell the rest no, of the No, no. <laughs> hey, what? what? What do you say? What Do you want me to what? You want me to... <laughs> You want me to let Sebastian go past? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Spell it out for me, please. Mm. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and they did. They went, well, there was some yeah, just... There was some other audio that we missed, the TV that... We got it. We didn't, but we actually found that. And you'll hear that soon. Yeah. 
And another one was uh, Bottas and Hamilton. Yeah. Very straightforward. Yeah. And it a quick surrender. James Allison. Yeah. Um, we're just Different hold, strategy. We're just going to hold positions. Just going to hold. That's right. Going to hold positions. And what did okay, Bottas... Okay, copy. Okay. Copy. Copy that. That's it. I dropped back five seconds Finish. now. Bang. There goes the race. Yeah. On team orders. Yeah. They Way to ruin a great race, Mercedes. Thanks. He was all over the back of him. Looked mm. fantastic. We've got two, three corners of excitement. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Bottas is going to take Hamilton. We're going to get a race. The first time Mercedes-Benz have raced each other. And no. Blah, blah. No. Just drop back. Hold position. Are you kidding me? What is this? Heaps of good battles down the back. Sainz overtook Sorokin under safety car. So he got a 10-second penalty. He finished 10th, but he also, with his 10-second penalty, finished outside the points. Yep. Brendan Hartley got put back up into 10th. Yep. Uh, there was battles galore, you know, when the, the safety car went and then you had a bunch of cars that were had unlapped themselves, but then they were in front of the likes of Bottas and Raikkonen. Raikkonen and Bottas were, were battling out of turn six, down into seven and eight, and Magnussen was blocking Raikkonen. Like, he was blocking him like... Oh, and I'm like, he? dude, you're a lap car. Get out of the fucking Get way. Get out of the way. You've got a Ferrari engine, you fucking car. Do you, know, do you know where your bread is buttered? Get out of the way. No. No, he got in the way. Bottas went underneath Raikkonen. Raikkonen ended up running wide. Bottas gets second. Raikkonen's fishtailing over off the side of the track thanks to Magnussen. Brilliant work there, Luke. Great commentary. <laughs> hey, by the way, uh, we'll be commentating a race soon. I Why hope are we? So. We're going to be doing that soon. I reckon we should aim for the Japanese Grand Prix. That'd be good. And we'll wear the traditional Japanese kimonos and stuff. I'll be wearing my sumo suit. Yeah, your fat suit. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's not, it's not a fat suit, it's just me. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> you just got your shirt off. In a thong. <laughs> a big oh, black dear. diaper, sumo now, diaper. Um, all jokes aside, mm. it's the first time I've ever felt sorry for Sebastian Vettel. Mm. That was heartbreaking. Even if you don't like, I mean, if you're not a fan of Sebastian Vettel, you would sympathise with the guy when he mm. hit the wall. I never thought I'd ever hear you say that. Oh, really heartbreaking. The way he said, what, what did he say? Oh, yeah, they bleeped it out. But do you want me to put in the swears? Because can, I'm clearly on a roll. You are on a roll. Don't, I, don't, I can't remember him saying any C-bombs, but he said, <laughs> he said, fuck's sake, I'm so fucking sorry, guys. Fuck's sake, I'm so fucking sorry. And it was like that. And it was heartbreaking. He was banging on the steering wheel. He crashed in front of the crowd, the German home crowd. But there was a few Dutchies in there. Was, like, they were pretty happy about it. Celebrating, that. I saw that. I'm like, Max wasn't going to win. Calm your father. Yeah. But yeah, devastating. Heartbreaking. Mm. But... You know, love conquers all. Love conquers all. That's that's all. Unless Hamilton's not winning, in which case he throws everything <laughs> out of the bath and he's having a tantrum. But when he's winning, God's great and love conquers all. And that's love the most important all. thing. I think whenever, whenever I like, whenever Lewis faces hardship in a race or you know something happens, I'm just gonna gonna tag him on Twitter and go, "It's love right, conquers man. All, man. Love conquers all." Yeah. Next time he loses his shit. And he has Throws a his tantrum. toys out the pram. Yep. Love conquers all. Yeah. Just relax, Hamilton. Yeah. And God loves you, man. Actually, that could be the Remember? name. Remember? That could be the name of his canoe that he sits in. The douche canoe. The douche canoe. Can just be called Love Conquers All. Conquers all. I love it. I like that. Oh, uh, so, a hell of a race. Hell of a race. Hell of a race. Hamilton gets to, well, the yellow flag. Um,. Gets, he gets let by by his teammate in the lead, takes the win, and the rest is history. And now Hamilton's got a nice handy chunk of a lead where a couple of laps towards the end of the race, Sebastian was rubbing his hands together. Mm. Lewis was catching him pretty quickly. Um, the, what I do love is mixed conditions. I love a little bit of wet track, a little bit of dry track. When I've, whenever I've raced go-karts, I've loved that because yeah. you've got that need to try and keep it because you're on slicks. To yep. try and keep it on there, and then the rest of the track you can fang it. Yep. And that's uh, there's some you. I always find the talent rises to the top when you've got mixed conditions because you can adjust your driving style to what the conditions are. Yep. Um, Lewis did it really well. Um, 
Well, he, he managed his tyres really well. Hulkenberg did really well in those conditions. Yep. His, his best finish, I think, for Renault, who was in fifth, he finished. Yep. A good result for him. Yep. Uh, Grosjean did really well. He was way back on the restart. He managed to carve a few guys up. Yep. Um, and finished seventh. Um, oh, hardly getting a point. I mean, driver of the day, maybe? Our driver of the day. Better than Hamilton, the douche canoe? Well, oh, of course. Douche canoe had a lot of things going his way. Team orders. No penalty. No penalties. And, but... and interesting, at that pit stop, if he was to be behind Bottas, when Bottas went into pit lane, yep. they decided on a different tyre. So the tyres they had for him, the ones they weren't going to put on, like uh, Ricardo in yep. Monaco. So he was sitting there. Because when I saw them running away from the car and they just dropped the tyres that they had in the blankets, I'm like, they're not going to use those. Yeah, right. They're going to grab some more. Yeah. Verstappen tried the the intermediates. He had 40 <clears throat> seconds before Magnussen, so he could have, he could pit twice and he's not going to lose a position. So it was they took a gamble. I think some could take a gamble. Leclerc took a gamble. Alonso took a gamble. Um, when Alonso... The, the interesting thing about Alonso, and I've actually, I think I retweeted something about Alonso's. Someone actually took all of the radio conversations from Alonso for the entire German Grand Prix. And it's really interesting to hear that they told him to come in and pit. He didn't suggest, can I come in for inters? Most other times, teams would go, How's, how do you feel out there? Yeah. Let us know when you want to come in. Yep. When If it's getting too wet, just let us know. He didn't make that choice. Right. McLaren made that choice and said, Get and he's like, why did you put me on these? I don't, I, don't, I don't want to be on Inters. And he just went backwards and ended up last and um, retiring in the last lap. And he's got a better idea of how the track's feeling. Let him make a decision. You, you well, let the, the, the drivers that are driving the track are the ones that generally should know the feel instead of going, oh, yeah, you should come in. And Alonso's got a fair bit of experience with driving a car, handling the car. How the tyres should 300 feel. 300 Grand Prix experience. I think he knows what tyre he should be on. Yeah. Don't jump me on a bloody Inter. Yeah, I, ju I just couldn't believe that. that Hamilton's was... on a what was it an ultra soft that he was on? Yeah. That was the perfect tyre, mm. and he could manage those in the wet. Yeah. It was grippy because it was still fresh tyres. Fresh tyres, and also you can heat them up quicker. See the the Made rain sense. would cool your tyres down, but you can reheat the the softer tyres up quicker than the harder tyres. So the the ultra softs were the do the best tyre to be on in those conditions. But yeah, I, I just couldn't believe that the way they were talking to him, like, dude, I'm like he should be making the calls here. Like, I've never heard a team go, like, I, I can see if they're taking a gamble, but when Alonso was in a decent position, just let him race until. I kind of feel like he should be doing everything. He should be the manager, the technical director. He could be doing. He could be the aerodynamicist. <laughs> he could do everything in that tra that team. Yeah. And not do a worse job than what he they're could currently be doing. The next Jack Brabham. He's pretty much. He could design, engineer, and do everything in the car, win the championship, yeah. and go, I did it. I did it. Thanks, guys. Yeah. And now I'm going to do it over there I'm going to pick up the construction trophy. Yes, here. at the same time. <laughs> He's a freak. He's awesome, but wasted talent. So what a race. Great race. Um, thankful for the rain. Thanks for Sebastian crashing off. We need rain in every track. And a safety car. And a safety car. No more virtual safety cars, no. just a real safety car. A real, real and safety And a, a car. little bit of rain just before the end because yeah. it just turns Again, a mundane race. Again, if they use race. our suggestions, throw on some water balloons on the track. Yeah, making F1 great again. That's We've, what we do. That's what we do. We, we come up with suggestions. And if only Liberty Media would listen. You listening? Listen. Listen in, Liberty. <laughs> We're going to be turning up to your door again. Should we turn up to their door again? Yeah. I feel like we should. In Oxfordshire. Oh, not the United not States. Not the United. That's the mistake yeah. we made last when we went yeah. to the US. Yeah, that's. I'm going to blame producer Pete. He's between between his <laughs> cockfights, and he's too focused on fighting he's cocks. Just so focused on cock. Mm. <laughs> Less of the cock, Pete. Um, yep. So okay. So let's look at the championship lead as it stands, Luke. What's I'm only going to do the top two. Yep. Lewis has taken the lead with 188, Sebastian 171. The rest don't matter. Yeah. Constructors, Mercedes 310, Ferrari 302. Uh, yeah, Lewis, Bottas, Raikkonen, Verstappen, Hulkenberg, Grosjean, Perez, Ocon, Ericsson with two points. Stay at home Viking, but you didn't Ooh, tip him. I didn't tip him. And Hartley got a single point. Hartley. That's his first point. Mm. Hartley. No, it's his second. Oh, it's his second, second point. My apologies. Point. Yeah. Um, where was his first point? Just out of interest. I don't know. Uh, 
when everyone else fell over. He was the only one on the track at the time. But good on you, Hartley. Hanging in there, big fella. Hopefully you're there for the next race for mm. Hungary. Maybe you, you might just be. Should be. Uh, let's look at the tipping championship between you know you and I. We have an ongoing tipping competition, and I'm leading by seven. Mm. Where we pick the qualifying and the uh, position of the teammates mm. head to head. Mm. How am I looking now? Not good. Okay. Oh, you're still up. You're still up. You're up by four. Um, you lost out. I went for Max to out qualify and Max to out race. Yep. That's two points you lost, mm-hmm. and I predicted Hartley to be in front of Gasly Ooh. in the race. So I got the third point back. Everything else we pretty much tipped got either got wrong together or got right together. Four point lead going into Hungary. Still feeling pretty confident, Luke, mm. but it can change so quickly. Yeah. This uh, you tipping. tipped Sebastian to out qualify Kimi. Yep. I said Kimi, Kimi, Kimi out raced. Sebastian out qualified, so they nullify each other. Yeah, fair so enough. Four points. Uh, time to hand out some highly treasured, highly respected effing one awards. <laughs> Luke, you are the you are the man, the generous man, handing out some awards. So let's have a look at the uh, green award for the smallest carbon footprint. This beautiful award, hand whittled <laughs> by Peter, the producer. He's very handsy. Yep. He's a whittler from yep. way back. He picked up a twig outside. Yep. And, and we just stuck uh, we it in some play doh. Um, <laughs> yep. Perspex. Bit of perspex. And then there we send and it off. we send that off to the winner, and more often than not, they don't like it much. No, they send it back. Tough address unknown. Sorry, yeah, they can't send it back because mm-hmm. we don't leave our address on there. That's right. <laughs> so who won the green award? The green award for this weekend goes to Daniel Ricardo. Ah. Oh. So not only did he get to finish some um, qualifying, he also finished the race thirty laps early. Yeah, not great. <laughs> Not great weekend for Dan. Very sad. Very sad. Thanks a lot, Renault. Mm. Nice engine, Renault. Mm. Doesn't need replacing. Oh, we don't give oh, you. No, 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 no. It doesn't need replacing. No. Sure. It's all right, it uh, does not need replacing. It's a perfectly fine. Sure. See, I can understand that. See? Cyril Abitbull. <laughs> Inaudible. Absolutely painful. Like he's eating chewing gum as he talks. Yeah. Enunciate. Yes. A time for the... Uh, Waste of Time Award, the UGE Day Award. Hey? Hey? hey. That's two weeks in a row I've got it it right. Nailed it. Nailed it. Two weeks in a row I said it right. You did good, my friend. Thanks, bro. And? Oh, the winner. (laughs) The winner. Well, the winner goes to the exact same man. He turned up to the German Grand Prix for no apparent reason, Daniel Ricciardo. Man. Not your fault, by now the way. Now he's only got one point ahead of Max Verstappen in the championship. Still doesn't he doesn't make any mistakes. He just has the world's worst equipment. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Renault. Mm. Um, and Red Bull, who, you know, stuff him up from time to time. Um, now it's time for the Effing One Podcast Award. We're making F one great again. Luke, that's our mission. And who picks up that award for the race? Well, it was tough. There was three choices I could have went with. There was the rain. Yep. Spice things up. Mm-hmm. There was a safety car, mm. but the man who brought out the safety car, oh. finger boy Sebastian Vettel. Das is good, guys. He gets the effing one podcast hey, award thanks for very making much, F1 great again. Thank you, guys. So it's such an honor to win this award. I'm just super uber pumped. Yeah, just great. So great. Uh, speak to me later. Skype me soon, okay? Yeah. I'm waiting for you guys, mm. but I may be a bit grumpy. Just let you know because it was a shitty race, okay? It was understandable. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Sebastian. Hmm, just popped in. Just Skype called in very quickly. Yeah. Uh, the Pastor Maldonado Award for Dangerous Driving, Luke. Mm. Now, there wasn't so much dangerous driving. There was a bit of reckless driving. Pastor Maldonado is always known for his crashing. Sometimes his... on his own, sometimes into someone else. So the mm, man who yeah. made F1 great again. Also grabs the Pastor Maldonado Award for crashing. Oh. And that's Sebastian Vettel. A little lock up in the rear. Oh. Just skidding up. Skidding across the gravel. Into the fence. Into the fence. In front of the home crowd. The banging on the steering wheel. The mm. crying. The, the swearing. Mm. I love when you hear a German yeah. swear. And I love when they wear their helmet all the way back to the pits. Mm. You know they're pissed yeah. when the helmet doesn't come off. Yeah, Lewis is... A, a big proponent of wearing his helmet that's everywhere he goes. That's because his hairdo so shit. Oh, did he's got the world's that? worst hairdo. Who braided that? I don't know, but come on, mate, you're better than that. I think it was his boyfriend. If you're going to be a champion, well, he is a champion, but that hairdo, four-time is... champion. 
If the hair doesn't show it, does it? Take a bit of pride in your appearance. Exactly. Son. You're a brand ambassador. The Lick It and Send It Award for uh, Best Overtaking Move. Lick It, Send uh, It. What do we got? Ouch. You take that a bit too seriously. I did. I went too it's hard. It's a winter night. You're going to I can't feel my fingers, fingers, Luke. I can't feel them. I can feel them. Thank you, Luke. You have warm hands. I always have warm hands. Warm hands, warm heart. Uh, the winner of the Lickin' and Send It Award is Romain Grosjean. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? To, what? <laughs> Explain. So he uh, made a, a great overtake down into turn six in the rain. He overtook like three guys in one corner. Overtook Hartley, went around another bloke, and then on, That's true, on, he en- did. on exit, he just took off, got good traction out of turn six and blasted. I think he made a off. mistake. I don't oh, it was all by accident. Complete accident. But by, it was a bloody good accident. Well done. Yeah. Tip of the cap to you, sir. Bravo. Well done. Yeah. Um, if Bottas had made that pass stick against Matt, uh, Lewis, um, that would have easily been the Lickett yeah. and Zendit Award. But uh, yeah, Grosjean just stuck it down there in the damp conditions on dry tyres, made it stick, made it happen. That's that's skill. That's well done, Grosjean. Mm. Well done. Well, no, credit where credit's due, Grosjean. Mm. Uh, the fastest lap, who picked that up? Douche Canoe. The douche. The driver of the day not voted by us, Douche Canoe. Um, our driver of the day, Hartley. Hartley. Picking up a point. Hartley. Not crashing. Great job, Hartley. Um, we're going to... I've got some... Uh, also, the fastest pit stop was Vettel. And the Ferrari pit stop mm, was a two point zero nine second pit stop. That's that's fast, blisteringly quick, isn't that? It's quick? Nearly one of the fastest ever pit stops. That's incredibly fast. Um, and we've got some. Um, we could, you know, we've love conquers all. Hamilton. Yeah. Um, we've got the douche canoe. Hamilton, the redeemer. Oh. Because no. when he stood on the podium and when he got out of the car, he put his arms out like Christ the Redeemer. In, yep. In Brazil. The big yep. statue. Yep. And I'm like, you are the biggest douche. Yep. Yep. Um, and He's producer Pete came up with a good nickname. Um, Lewis, I think I'm Jesus Hamilton. Oh. Pete, that's a ripper. Producer Pete, that's a good one, isn't it? But remember. He's really good at that. Love conquers all. Love conquers all. It's hard to go past love conquers all. Mm. That's going to stick, that one. Well, when we do our next round of nicknames for our drivers... We have got a plethora for, for <laughs> Hamilton. We're going to have to load up. I don't I, know. It's going to be so hard to choose. He's not helping himself. He's not giving me a quality to go, you know what? I No, know, he doesn't do himself any favours. You just act favors. like a petulant child. Yeah, I yeah. think you've earned too much money. You oh, believe boy. in your greatness. Believe in the hype. But I think it's very Anton Center-esque. Anton always felt he was above and he was a bit godlike and that no harm could come yeah. from him. Yeah. So I hope he stays safe. Stay safe, Lewis. When, when you think about... The risks that... Yeah. You're not untouchable. We are mortal, up. after all. That's it. Mm. Okay. Oh, and by the way, uh, with the nicknames, we'll be throwing that... Uh, we're winning. We'll do that pretty soon, in the next couple of weeks, most likely. Yeah. We'll throw it over to the uh, effing one, number one uh, podcast Twitter uh, listeners, so you can vote on those. We'll do that soon, I reckon. It's probably mm. a good time to do it. Freshen up a little halfway through the season. Some new nicknames for our drivers. Uh, oh, we've got a Skype call Sebastian. That's what we need to do. So he was a bit upset. <clears throat> a uh, bit? A bit, yeah. He, a bit? He didn't want to do it. Oh, man. He was, was a bit sad, but I I actually I kind of used my my wares. And you, you tempted him. Yeah. You tempted him. I sent him a dick pic. Yep. And, <laughs> and he, he sufficed to say he answered the call. He answered the call. So, you know, I gave him 10 minutes. Yeah. So he could do what he needed to do, and uh, I managed to get him on Skype. Yeah, which was which was pretty nice. So let's yeah. um. He had a nice glow about him too. Let's have a look how that call went. Hey, hi guys. Hi Sebastian. Hi guys. Uh, it's not so great today, but um, hey. Thanks for look. taking the call. Hey, look. Mm. Um, thanks for the dick pic. Just <laughs> I didn't think you're gonna mention. Oh my it. god, it's um. I had no idea, Alaba. You just you trims the top and the undercarriage. <laughs> Of course. Crazy. It's for, for aerodynamic purposes. Wow. It really makes... It does make it look bigger. So that's... It, it really you need does. that. So that's good for you, look. And the angle. It's always at the angle. Being single as well for you. <laughs> tricky, you know. You need to be manscaped downstairs. So mm. congratulations. Thank you. I made it pretty just for you. So on the podcast? We are on the effing one podcast. What's it called again? <laughs> the effing... I don't care. Whatever. I don't care. So what do you want to say? Um, tough race for me today, Lucas. So tell me about shop, the race. Shop. How did it go? You you grabbed pole, a really oh, dominant Jesus. pole, 
made the crowd go wild. You came in the next day, you led the race. Yeah, true. You got held up a little bit by Raikkonen when yep. he pitted earlier, but uh, the team let you past and then uh, not Tim orders look no this is not something we do with the Merce with the uh, Ferraris maybe in Mercedes Benz sure but not Ferrari mm -hmm. not Tim orders yeah. um so not directly anyway no of course no it's a different strategy look is yeah. then different. the rain came sure yes the rain came uh, and then I did a little lock up in the back in mm -hmm. Zoria and the the car just scooted off into mm -hmm. the DHL sign mm -hmm. in front of all the screaming fans and I went fuck sex I said, Jesus, fuck. No. No, 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 no. Mm. That's not a nice look. I wasn't happy. No. So I, I left my I helmet on and I stormed back to the I garage. Saw kick, I saw you kick the gravel. I kicked the dog as well. <laughs> I kicked the dog. I don't know whose dog it was. I just kicked it. I said, oh, so sorry. But it deserved it's a little shit. Was it a German schnauzer? Schnauzer. Yeah, the schnauzers. The stupid little fuckers. Anyway, I can't handle this. I'm gonna go look. Okay, it's just a, it's too raw. It's too fresh Are for you me. You okay, mate? No, just, no, no. Send yeah. another dick picky. Okay, bye, Loki. Bye. Oh, oh, Jesus. I'm not gonna send him another dick pic. <laughs> you probably should just no. to cheer him up. No, I asked him if it's okay. Put a little costume it's on it. It's important if you okay. if you have a mate that's that's not feeling well, you reach out and you say <laughs> you okay, mate. And I did that. You reach out with a dick pic. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was before. Like that was oh. that was bait. That was just pure bait. We got him. We got You're him. welcome. I have no yeah. dignity. I have no concern It's like you're baiting that privacy. hook to catch a fish. You put mm. your little worm on there. Little worm. Live and kicking. Just reel him on in. Grab that fish, bring him in. Yeah. And, yeah, so you're welcome. I won't send, send it to anyone. The things you want. have to do, I mean, you know, deep peak, I mean, it's not easy, but the things you do for... F1 podcast oh, just to get Sebastian on above and beyond. You, the nothing is out of out of the realm of possibility. No, just, just for a I, good podcast. I feel very safe when it's Skype, but when it's you know when we get into. And thank the, God, at least your mum listens to this podcast. Because if not, this is a waste of a dick pic. Mm. It feels like if we're not getting at least your mum downloading <laughs> this episode, it's a waste. <laughs> Okay, so uh, time to preview Hungary. Ah, mm. And as is F1 podcast tradition, we are wearing the native Hungary. costumes of the featured race. Luke is wearing the Transylvanian Count Dracula outfit. Blood. <laughs> I want to suck your blood. It looks very similar to Robert Kubica. Very similar. Blood. Yeah, his normal attire. Yeah. And I'm wearing the uh, Matt Yo folk costume, including the shirt with the wide and long, richly embroidered sleeves and the embroidered uh, man apron and hi hat. Mm. I feel like the perfect mix of folk <laughs> and formal. Okay, so Hungary. It's an important mix. It's a very important mix. And we have to wear the traditional outfit, Luke. It's what we do. It's what we do best. We wear outfits We well. wear stuff better than what we talk. Yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest. That's what right. we say doesn't make much sense. No. What we wear makes complete sense. There's people, who, there's one person who listened to China and he hasn't listened again. So obviously we don't make sense to that man in China. No, but or if, woman. No. But if you could see our outfits, oh, he'd listen to Maybe every... we should film one of our podcasts. Yep. Where we're wearing some kind of authentic outfit. That is a really good idea. <laughs> it's because it seems, it seems like a bit of a waste if no one can see us wearing this outfit. Yeah, it does. Because we go to all this trouble. It's a lot of money too. Because Peter's up all night weaving on the... Weaving, whittling. Whittling and weaving. <laughs> These outfits that we wear. And it's a shame that no one ever gets to see them except for Pete. He does it for love though. Yeah. He does such a good job. And I'm so glad he takes the, your dick pics. <laughs> he just... I didn't. <laughs> Mum took those. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Luke. Great work. Great focusing. <laughs> Great, great work. Okay. Uh, Hungary, the track, tell us about that. Who does it favour? I can't tell you. <laughs> I can't even. <laughs> mum, take me. Your mum is going to be so offended. Oh, no, she won't. Okay. She's a good sport. She is. So, uh, the Hungary, the fantastic Hungara ring. I think if I was to create a Formula One track for fun, just to, <coughs> to go faster around, mm -hmm. it would be Hungary. Um, it's like, a, like an oversized go-kart track. That's cool. Some good fast flow sections. Um, the straight's not too long. They did extend it. Uh, Perfect for Red ago. Bull. Perfect for Red Bull. Should be good for Ferrari. Um, turn four is one of the great corners. 
Uh, there's been some great overtakes around turn five. Turns one, two are great too. So there's a, a kind of a hairpin-esque turn one and turn two. Very cool. You can go side by side. Um, and there's some really, really good overtaking opportunities, whether you get a decent run on them down the main straight. No point really talking. The rest of the track's just sort of fast, flowy corners. There's a little chicane at six and seven. But it would be a fun track to go fast around. Some oh, yeah. good changes of direction. Um, 70 laps, a 4.381 kilometer track. It's notorious for low overtaking, but if Daniel Ricciardo has some penalties, it'll be fun for overtaking. And, and he's made, in the last, what, 2014, he won the race there. Yep. Uh, or was it, yeah, 2014, he won. 2015, he should have won. Um, he he had, likes this track. He had contact with um, Rosberg. He had contact with Hamilton. Uh, when he had his contact with Rosberg, he had to pit. He was running second at that time when he overtook Rosberg. Uh, he pitted um, for, I think he had front wing damage. So he had to pit and get a new front wing, and he ended up finishing third. He was catching Sebastian hand over fist. He was clearly the fastest guy on the track. He loves Hungary. 2016, um, he was doing decently uh, in and last year he had an accident with Max at turn two. Uh. He got around uh, Max, made a good run, but then he got pushed wide at the exit of turn one. On the turn into turn two, Daniel went around the outside. Max understeered and just drove straight into the side of as he does of Daniel. Daniel gave him the finger, I think. Yep. Um, yeah, race over. But I think it will be a great track for Daniel. Depends on where he's going to start. Um, Thanks, Renault. Yeah, so he'll have a new engine. Whether or not that was what was damaged, we don't know. Well, if he takes a new engine, he'll have to be penalised. He will. If they give him a new engine, maybe they say, no, you have to fix what you just broke. and We're not going to give you anything ever again. Here's some tools. Shut the hell up. Do it yourself. Yeah, DIY. And they'll probably make a better engine. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a great race for Red Bull. Red Bull should win it. Uh, if it's not Daniel, it'll be Max. Um, Unless Max crashes into someone and does something stupid, yep. But uh, it's yeah, it'll be it would be a fun track to race around. Really good atmosphere, great fans, Polish fans turn up um, to watch Kubica stand in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I uh, I listen to the the podcast Beyond the Grid. It's made by F1 by a gentleman called Tom Clarkson. He's mm -hmm. the the interviewer. And I met Tom Clarkson in Monaco, dropping names now. That's what you do. Nicest bloke. Yeah. Um, he did a charity ride with Mark Webber from the top of the UK to the bottom, John O'Groats to Land's End, before Mark got his first F1 gig. And he interviewed Kubita and just... Kubita opened up. He had a contract with Ferrari. He had everything lined up and he was completely honest. He He told us how he tricked Lewis into winning kart races by um, slowing the sort of before they start the race, he takes control of the pace when you go on pole position. So Kubica was sitting in front mm -hmm. of Lewis and he knows that if he's not in front of Lewis, he's going to struggle because Lewis does a fast warm-up lap with right. the whole... But if you go as slow as possible, um, a lot of the time Lewis couldn't finish the race because his car would stop. So Kubica right. was slowing the speed down so much that his engine was nearly puttering out when Lewis's was. Wow. So he had trickery up his sleeve and he knew what to do to get little wins like that. Wow. Kubica's an intelligent man. And Sebastian Vettel said, oh, why hasn't Kubica come back so soon? Like, why didn't he come back five years ago? Mm. You know, it's been a while. You know, he's had so many hand surgeries. Yep. I think over 20. Wow. Yeah. And some of the surgeries were actually made it worse um, he didn't have the right people in place or what he thought they were he's still super fast he's, he's super fast that. the thing is he's he said in that podcast if i didn't think i was up to it i wouldn't be here yep. i wouldn't be trying i know i'm good enough and he said just like any sport he goes i'm you give me a car i used to drive like the 2012 cars i'll beat anyone but you put me in the modern day cars, which I've hardly driven in. And when they made the decision on the driver lineup for Williams, he'd had what three 
two days yeah. of running in these cars. And Sergey had done <coughs> Sergey had done practices in Renault. He was there at Malaysia. He'd had practice sessions throughout the year. So he knew what was going on. He knew the Pirelli yep. tires. He knew all these things. And he said, if just like any any sport, when you come back, you need to practice. You need to practice what you do. And you look at the the session he did in the Circuit de Catalunya. He was quicker than Lance Stroll by about a second and a half. But everyone is. Everybody is. Everybody is. But you know, he proved that he could do it. That he could do it. Mm. And, I, and I have complete faith. Then I and I think everyone should get behind Kubica to get a drive for next year because I have Absolutely. no doubt that he can do it. No doubt whatsoever yep. in my mind because he has said, if I don't think I can do it, and he's his own harsh critic, and when you listen to it, you can hear that he is. He knows, he remembers everything. He used to tune engines when he was karting. His job was between Tuesday and Sunday, between, I think, before the weekend here, like three, four days where he'd have to tune the engine. So they put a new engine in his car and... Uh, Rosberg's car because Rosberg was his teammate he would drive around and he'd have to do it between 15 and 20 seconds a lap slower than what you, you're going at full pace because you need to bed the engine in and you need to go lap and lap and lap and lap and lap for, for days mm. to bed these engines in so when it came to the weekend Rosberg turned up the engine's already bedded in for him Kubica had done all the work for him yep. Rosberg had no idea yeah right and he he'd beat them he beat these guys that are world champions. The guy was a talent. Everyone knows that. Yep. And the fact that he's saying, I can do this job now, proves to me, okay, he can't always hold on to the steering wheel, but it's at a point where you don't. How many times do you drive your car around a roundabout? You whip one hand around and you hold it and the other one just kind of hovers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So it, like, if you don't need it, you don't need it. Only problem is, where's he going to go? Where's a seat available and who's going to take that punt on Kubica? So I've got, I think I've got three teams Surely that he Williams. could possibly go to. Williams is one of them. Yep. Uh, Toro Rosso is another one. But if, if well, Toro Rosso, um, they'll stick with Gasly. If Saints comes Sainz, back, Sainz, that's don't not. think he'll go back to that level. I think they'll either let him go or let him go to another team. There could be a spot available in Toro Rosso. Yeah, because they're looking at Dan Tictum, who's a Formula 3 driver. But if Dan Tictum doesn't win the Formula 3 championship, he won't have the necessary points for the super license that you need to to drive an F1. Right. So he can't um, at the moment. Uh, so And they could put Kibita in the car. Okay. Um, Toro Rosso, Williams, third option. Williams, and the third option is, I believe, McLaren. Now, the reason why I say McLaren, if Alonso leaves, they need a senior driver. Kimi Raikkonen, is that going to be a problem? Could be Kimi, but I don't think Kimi will go back to McLaren. I don't think it's enticing enough for him to just be driving around. You think he'll just he'll quit? I think they'll probably put him in Sauber, or they'll just go, hey, just... He wants to win. And drink vodka. And vodka. Yeah. Um, but I... I Kubica would be a good yardstick. He'll be against either Van Dorn or Lando Norris. I think Lando Norris needs another year in Formula 2. I think he's had a tough year in Formula 2. I don't think it's been hard for him. I just think he's had a bit of bad luck. Maybe his self-confidence is down a bit. And the other Brit, George Russell, has done really well. Any young Aussies coming through? Not at the moment. No. I think there's a guy in Formula 3. Um, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, but... I think there's a there's another gap. Like there's, yep. a, there's a series gap, whether it's a Renault World a Series by Renault 3.5 V8s or whether it's uh, Formula 2 or GP3. I think he needs to go to that level to, to make it into F1. Um, but yeah, so Merck have Hamilton Bottas locked in. Uh, Hamilton for two years. Yep. Bottas for a single year with an option for a second year. Yep. Um also, in the in that uh, beyond the grid, they talked to Mark Webber. Mark Webber said he had a deal with Ferrari, um, which was they'd agreed on two years, which is what he wanted. And then at the last stage, Ferrari goes, we'll give you an option for one. And a second one, like, we'll have you for one year and give you an option for a second. And Mark going, no, nah, give me two. 
which we'd agreed on with um, Luca Montezemolo. This is what we agreed on, and they've gone, no, one and one, and he's gone, no, nah, I'll stay with Red Bull. What year was this? Uh, I think it was 2012. Okay. Maybe. Yep. So he, he finished his last two years at Red Bull. Yep. So he would have been, team, he would have been he pairing been up with Alonso. Alonso, yeah. Yep. And he goes, there was nothing in the contract that said um, uh, anything about being second driver, driver one or driver two. No. Nope. Um, there was nothing in that. And it was a, it was a great interview, again, yeah, with, wow. with Mark. Mark was very open and honest about it. And and that's when uh, Porsche came to him and said, listen, you if you want to finish off what you do with Red Bull and then come to us when we have our LMP1 team, jump in so yeah wow ferrari will have vettel next year who's going to be in the other seat raikkonen leclerc or the long 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 shot of fernando alonso fernando going back to ferrari mm. raikkonen went back to ferrari so dan's definitely out yeah yeah alonso may be in the picture mm. i find that hard to believe oh this is me being hypothetical yeah because I would like to see him in a top. I think it's I think it's locked team. in Leclerc. I, I think it is too. It feels like it. I, the Leclerc fact that has Raikkonen deserved. is doing the the language over the radio of you know tell me just tell me what what I am and what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And yeah, I just think it's over. I think it. You know, Leclerc has done everything right this year, everything right. So I can't see a reason why they wouldn't put him on. Yeah, uh, Red Bull Racing, Verstappen's definitely locked in. Uh, it'll either be Ricardo, Sainz, or Gasly. They're the three stable mates yep. under Red Bull. I don't think Hartley's going to get the gig, though. I can't imagine so it. I can't, yeah. I think it'll be Daniel. Um, Renault, Hulkenberg, they'll sign him up. They'd be stupid not it's to. Crazy not to. And Hulkenberg is in a good position because if Renault deliver on the people that they've brought in, They've brought in Mercedes engine people. They've brought in an ex-FIA technical delegate who sort of knows everyone's secrets. If they can bring them in and it all works, Renault could be like they were in the mid-2000s. Could be Fernando Alonso. a fourth constructors team in that top echelon. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, I hope Interesting. so. For the sports sake, it would be good to have another team in there. And the choices they have in the Renault, uh, Renault wanting Ocon because he's French. And they would like a French driver there. Yep. Uh, Carlos Sainz, he's currently there. I don't think he'll get a job at Red Bull Racing. Grosjean, he's French, but he's had a pretty shit year. He drove yeah. really well in Hockenheim. Um, Artem Markalov, he's one of their test drivers. Uh, Russian bloke, he does a decent job in Formula 2. And rank outsider Alonso going back to Renault. I think it would be a good move for Alonso. But I think they're going to go... Like, Hulkenberg's going to stay. I, it'd be silly for Renault. Like, yeah. what, he's, what yep. he's done for Renault this yep. year, um, that would be silly of them. Um, but it'll either be Ocon or Alonso. Uh, we didn't do predictions. No, we haven't. I'm, no, I I'm, just thought of that. Yeah. We didn't need to knock that out real fast. Yeah, that's on my next page. Oh, I perfect. I have another page of stuff. Oh, wow. Mm. And I have I have a little bit of audio from Brendan Hartley. Fantastic. Well. Mm. Um, should we intro that? I will do the rest of the driver markets. So I'll wrap it up. Let's do that. Briefly. Uh, Haas, Magnussen, I think it'll be shooing. He's done really well for them, even though he's a crazy driver. And I think he wants to die. Grosjean, possibly. New Garden from IndyCar, I would like to see. Time for him to move on. Oh, yeah, I think Grosjean I think can so. bug off. But I think New Garden, he'll probably win the Indy Championship again this year. He's an American talent, an American team. It would be great for him. Get an American driver th- in there. And I think that'd that's, be cool. That's in what the Joseph team. Newgarden could be. Um, I really rate Joseph Newgarden. He's, Young guy? He came into Penske. Yeah, early 20s. Yep. Uh, came into Penske. He had Elio Castro Neves, Will Power, and Simon Pagano. All these blokes who won championships. Oh, sorry. Castro Neves hadn't. Castro Neves has won three Indy 500s. Uh, but he beat them in his second year at Penske. Be good to get another American in there. It's been it a would. long time. It's been a long time, and I think New Garden's probably the best of what they had. No disrespect to Alexander Rossi. He was very good when he was there, but he was in a manner you couldn't really judge how good he was. Um, but Joseph Newgarden has done an incredible job at uh, Team Penske in IndyCar, and I think he deserves a spot in F1. I know F1 doesn't look at it that way, 
but he's he's one driver who I think is young enough and he adapts well enough that he could do a decent job over there. That'd be great. Mm. Force India, Perez, Ocon, uh, Russell, who's leading the Formula 2 Championship, uh, Nicholas Latifi is one of their test drivers, and the possible new owner of Force India, Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll. They believe Lawrence Stroll will be making a bid for Force India very soon. Is and, that right? Yep. Team Stroll. Team Stroll. And, uh, of course, Stroll Lance, will be driving for Lance them. Will Lance will get a job. The... It would be funny if Dad bought the thing and didn't give a ride. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Lance. You're just rubbish. Um, we're going to have to let you go. Yeah. Uh, McLaren, Alonso, Van Dorn, Norris, and the outside of Kubica. Um, they need some experience in there. It could come from Raikkonen. Uh, it could come from Perez. Uh, it, it could come from Grosjean. They've got options. Um, if any of these, are, I hope there's a bit of a shake up. I hope you know Lando Norris. I think give him another year in uh, Formula Two. Kubica needs a ride. I think it'll be a perfect place for him. Yeah, he needs a go. He needs a he needs a crack. Sauber. Uh, will Ericsson keep his job? Don't know. Giovinazzi. Uh, he's an unknown quantity. Did really well in uh, Formula Two when he made the jump to Formula One for a couple of races. He crashed. He crashed. He crashed. He's done some really good work for Ferrari in the simulator to overcome some setup issues. He's. I think I, I think Ericsson could be in trouble. Yeah, I think Giovinazzi will definitely get the drive, but who's going to be alongside him? I don't know. It could be Raikkonen. Raikkonen could be pushed back there. They could put a, a senior driver in there with Kubica. I hope Kubica gets a drive somewhere. But if Grosjean is kicked out, if Perez is kicked out, uh, signs there's heaps of options for Sauber to, to bring someone in. <clears throat> Williams, um, Sorokin will probably stay. Uh, Russell, since he's a Mercedes driver, they'll have Mercedes engines, so they might want to put a Junior in there. Yep. But I think they need they need, as I said, you always need a leader in your team. You always need someone who's experienced. Kubica, of course. Um, I think Kubica could drive for any team. So yeah. Kubica, 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 Kubica. Uh, yeah, Russell could go there with Sorokin. Sorokin probably brings a wealth of money and Williams are struggling at the moment. Jacques Villeneuve says it's the death of the team. It's not going to last long. Really? Yeah. And the last team, Toro Rosso, Gasly, Dan Tictum, if he gets his super license points. And if there's any other, I don't think there's any other standout Red Bull juniors that are coming through. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kubica, um, signs could go back there. Yeah, those those are the options for the driver market. The trade market. Mm. Uh, speaking of Williams potentially going under, it feels like McLaren could very easily do the do the same if mm. they don't pull their finger out pretty mm. quick, smart. Yeah. It seems like it doesn't take long. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that Williams were smashing it, dominating. Mm. Uh, and then as soon as Bottas left, it's been a downward spiral. Mm. And it could, I mean, that could be enough to send the team under. It's just weird that one driver leaves, you lose momentum, other things fall into place, and you're in big trouble. But, the, you know, they brought in Paddy Lowe, who was, you know, designing cars for Mercedes. Uh, he came in as a replacement for Bottas going to Mercedes. So this car isn't purely Paddy's. Um, well, it kind of is, but it hasn't really delivered. They've had some differences in their wind tunnel to their... Um, computer data and so it's been off um, they're actually trying they've actually believed that they've found some um, some fixes for all of these um, so it looks like they're on their way up but they've got a long way to go they've got two junior drivers they need someone who has direction the great thing about Felipe Massey in the car is that he had a bit of direction yep. uh, Bottas had had enough <clears throat> years in there to sort of steer the car into a direction what they wanted and to be able to give immediate feedback and go this is where we need to go. This is the issue. Um, and then them being able to design around it. Yeah. But fundamentally, there's something wrong with the car, which they're only just figuring out now. Yeah. Tough times. Tough times, Williams. Tough times for McLaren. Uh, let's do some quick predictions. Prediction. We need to rock into that. Let's get into that. So uh, let's look at Ferrari. Hungary. Hungary and Ferrari. Mm. I'm going to have to say Sebastian, Sebastian. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts? Um, I'll go... Oh, I'm going to go Kimi. 
Kimi. Yeah. What about... What about Are you going Kimi? double Kimi? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, I think Sebastian's still going to be crying. Yeah. He will be. What about um, Mercedes-Benz? Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Lewis. Lewis. I will also go the double ham. The double ham. Um, Red Bull. Let's go... Mm. Oh, you see, this engine issue is going to be a problem. If I'm just having a guess now, I'm going to go double Dan. I've double Dan down. Double Danning down, brother. Um, Renault. Renault. Uh, Nico Hulkenberg. Man's on fire. Just a big H. Isn't he good? A big H. I hope they do well next year. I hope Renault picks their game up a little bit. The um, Hassholes. The Hassholes? Yeah. Grosjean Ooh. and Magnussen. Um, I'll go for the suck my balls, please. Suck my balls. Magnuson. I'm going to go with Grosjean and on. He's had a good race. I think he might be confident. Force uh, India? Force India. Mm. Perez Ocon. Uh, I'm going to go Ocon. Me too. And McLaren, McLaren, Alonso and Van Dorn. Alonso for me, please. I don't, I don't I'm just going all the favourites, aren't I? Yeah. Just going all the favourites. I'm trying Sauber. to keep, keep my lead, mate. Just, just got to keep it. Uh, Leclerc for me. And the stay at home Viking. I'd like to do the stay at home Viking voice, but. <laughs> Torosso, gas man, or the point scoring Hartley. I'm going to go for Hartley. Double Hartley. Double Hartley. The Kiwi kid has found mean, some form. He's I'm got a go point. Gas man, because I, I dare say I might be able to get some points back. <laughs> Williams, Williams, the uh, the Rusky, or oh, definitely the Rusky. Rusky, yeah. I will also go the Rusky. A quick word from Brendan Hartley. Oh yeah, Brendan Hartley. Yeah, he was pretty pumped about pretty picking pumped. up a point. You yeah. had a chat to him. Had a post-race. brief chat with him. Yeah, he, he gave me some words of wisdom about how um, they came to some great decisions on the pit wall. Oh, let's play that audio. Oh, choice, bro. So I was in the race. And uh, it started to rain. Uh, the lap they called me to come in. I was going to be much quicker on the slicks as long as I could survive in turn six where it was wet. Uh, if there was a downpour, it was absolutely the wrong decision. I looked at the sky. I didn't go against the team. I asked the question, okay, I think I can do one more lap. There was good communication. It was teamwork. There was one lap in. Turn two, it got really wet. Like, Guys, we need to box this lap. I think there was two laps before and then Sebastian, you went off. But the team gave me information. It wasn't going to get any worse. It was only going to get better. They had it this information. So initially, I'd say, let's stay out. And then I said, I think we have to box now. And they said, no, we're good. Stay out. <laughs> it was good communication all around. In the car, you only see so much from the information and you rely heavily on what the team says on the radar. It was probably only a matter of time until there's going to be a safety car and somebody would go off. I'm so happy to get another point. I probably won't have a job next year, but I got a point again. <laughs> he did get a point. In drive of the day. Let's drive of the day. Hardly oh. one point. <clears throat> Bit of an interesting insight from Brendan there. Yeah, was that was great, mm. Brendan Hartley? What a great guy, friendly, very friendly. Mm. Uh, sounds familiar. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> oh, it's now time for at home with Kimmy. Well, it was nice. We kind of sang that last bit. I did. I faded out very quickly. Uh, now, no, Kimmy Raikkonen is—he's uh, crazy. We love him. Um, Formula One's mad dog, uh, <laughs> the vodka drinking mad dog. And people often want to know what uh, Kimmy's doing right now in mm. uh, Finland, in Helsinki, the capital of Finland. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I say it's Reykjavik or some other place. I almost never get that right, yeah. the capital of Finland, but I just managed to get that right just then. So um, we've had a, a Twitter, an unusual Twitter request mm. from the Ferrari garage. They rarely tweet. And they'd like to see... Uh, Kimi Raikkonen lining up at the Ferrari motorhome at the Bay Marie, and they would like to see him try to order a chicken salad. Hmm. So let's see what Kimi's doing yeah. right now. Whoa. Okay. 
Okay, so oh, it was a tough day at the track. Uh, I got a bottle of vodka. I finished that. Now I'm hungry. Let's go to the Ferrari Motorhome. Okay. Oh. Uh. Hello. Ciao. Hello. Ciao. Hello, Franco. Um, uh, Kimi Raikkonen here. And hey, boy, I'm pretty hungry. What uh, we got here? What was this one here? Was uh, that, that a, That's a pasta meal. A pa- uh, oh, can I have the pasta, please? No, you can't have the pasta. We have to save some for Sebastian. What? What do you mean? Uh, you cannot have it. We you just wait and wait your turn. Wait till Sebastian comes in. So uh, Sebastian has reserved this one. Yes, you, you can't have oh, that. Okay, you can't okay, have no, the okay, no. okay. Fuck off. Okay. So what about uh, what's this one? The chicken chicken salad. Yes, uh, you can't have the chicken salad. We, we chi- have to we have to wait until Sebastian turns up, and you can make your decision after. Oh, him. for fuck's sake. Uh, okay, no problem. Uh, what about this apple? I'll have this apple, please. No, you can't have this apple. We were saving this for Sebastian. Uh, uh, guys. Guys, come on! What? Is this team orders? You're saying this team order, please. We, you? you can have... Uh, I want you to... S- oh, no. Shut up. I want you to say it. You tell me it's team orders. You tell me I can't eat anything here. Uh, affirmative. You uh, can't have any of the food here until Sebastian gets here. Okay. That's Just so long as you said that, that's, that's fine. That's team orders. By the way, I'm not going to be here next year. Fuck you guys. And that was... At home with Kimmy. That's a convincing Italian. That, and that uh, <laughs> Finnish accent of Kimmy's oh, wow. seems to be wavering slightly, doesn't <laughs> it's it? It's a Finnish Elmer Fudd. That's, Very, that's what I think it is. That's exactly what it is. Mm. Well, there's life after Formula One for him. There is. Cartoon voices. Uh, <laughs> that's great. That was, really, that was great. I'm glad that Ferrari... Um, was so honest about the way they treat him in the Bay Marie. Oh, it is. I'm glad they asked. And we just happened to tune in at the right time. Well, lucky we caught we that. We were actually very lucky in the race. We had um, the radio little back and forth. Yeah, we did. And then we got a little bit of snippet of uh, Kimi's reaction after it. We so we'll read over what happened yes. with the radio message. Yep, 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 um, yep. So Jock Clear is giving Raikkonen... Some, yes. He's giving him some. Is that going to go that way? I've got it. We've got the script here. We've got it here. We're gonna. This is the exact script of the Kimi Raikkonen exchange with Jock. Kimi, this is Jock. You're aware we need to look after the tires. Both cars need to look after their tires, and you two are on different strategies. Your strategies are slightly different, and we like you to. You wouldn't like you to hold up, Seb. Thank you. Uh, can can you be more direct? I, I I don't know. What what do you mean? What do you want me to do? Uh, losing as little time as possible, obviously, where you can. Seb is capable of going quicker, but he's hurting his tyres, and you are as well. We need to look after them. You you want me to let him go? Please, please, just just tell me you want me to let him go. Yeah, affirmative, affirmative, Kimi. Yes, please. Okay. Well, this is just fucking great. I mean, I'm a world champion. My name is Kimmy Wackenden. You know that, guys. Come on, guys. Hey, I'm I'm in the lead, and now you want me to. Uh, I mean, everyone knows I'm driver number two, but now you've just said it. So you know what? Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. And fuck you. Yeah, fuck you. Wow. I'm out. Ah, there you go. Jeez. He didn't, wasn't too happy after that. I, I can understand why they didn't broadcast that little bit of a rant at the end. Yeah, no wonder they cut that off. Mm. That was feisty. Mm. We don't expect but anything honest, different from him. That's the best thing about Kimmy, though. He's an honest. That's You get what you pay for with Kimmy. He doesn't bullshit around. No bullshit. Also, I'd like to pay our respects, our F1 podcast, pay our respects to the ex-Ferrari boss, Sergio Marchione, yep. who passed away overnight. Um, our condolences to him and his family. Yeah, sad times. Prego, prego. Um, Buona patuti. We have one thing from the douche canoe. A recently oh. deleted Instagram story. Is this the one where he's um, hanging shit on his nephew for wearing a dress? No. That was, <laughs> That's not it. That was tasteful. Yeah. That was I nice. I said the same thing. Oh, you're a boy. Boys don't wear dresses. Yes, nice they one. do. Nice have one, idiot. Scotland? Way to pick on a five-year-old, you idiot. <laughs> Like the kid's Come got Instagram on. going. I can't believe he said that. I'm really hurt. Yeah. I don't think the kid cares, but no, everyone else care. did. Yeah. Everyone took offense on the they kid's sure behalf. Did. They sure did. Um, he said this on Instagram. Um, I'm not going to do an, e- an English accent, so I've done enough accents to know. <laughs> I never get to watch the races, but 
but just got home and watched Sky. I'm finding it amusing to listen to the ex-drivers commentating. Not a single one of them could find a good word to say. Whatever the reason it is, it's okay, I forgive you. Positivity and love wins always. And no matter what words you use to try and undermine me, I started 14th today and I finished first. God is good all the time. <laughs> oh, if you wanted to give me another reason seriously. to dislike you, you've succeeded. Mission accomplished, douche canoe. What an absolute douche. Now, Sky F1, as everyone knows around the world, are guys that blow so much smoke up Lewis Hamilton's ass because that's it. That's all they've got for England now. It's just him. It's just Lewis. And it's the Lewis Hamilton show. They always talk about Lewis. They always talk about him in this glowing light and they fucking love him. And these guys... They ignore the fact that he's a douche. Yeah. They completely skim past all of his douchebag characteristics. So he thinks that they're being critical of him when Mm. he's watching a complimentary coverage. I think he may have been listening to our podcast while watching it and confusing our shit throwing. He's getting a serving of the Mm. truth by listening to us, and he doesn't like it. Truth served up cold. If he doesn't like you should... He needs to... You know what Hamilton needs to listen to? He needs to sit down with Producer Pete. Producer Pete will give him an earful. (laughs) Producer Pete is not impressed. Set him straight. Isn't that right, Producer Pete? You better believe it. Yep. Yep. He's just about to get started. Don't... don't, He's going to go into a rant. He's going to go into a Hamilton rant. (laughs) Because when he he's unle- he unleashes on Hamilton, mm. and fair enough. But yeah, that was completely bollocks. What a load of bullshit! Seriously, yeah. Love conquers all. Love the stuff conquers. he the stuff he says when he's winning, and the complete opposite when he's losing. He's so you know what, transparent. He's also a musical artist. He's a rapper. He's a he's and he, he could, is God. At any moment, he could quit this biz, man, and be a muso, bro. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> self-funded with all the hundreds of millions of dollars. You know what he is? Software. He's the Lance Stroll of the music industry. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Lance Stroll of R&B, baby. Oh, boy. He puts the B in R&B. Doesn't he? What a douche. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up. We do need to mention Luke's mum. Mm. What a sp- what a Hungarian feast. Of course, that's the next race for Formula One. And what a beautiful smorgasbord we've got. What's this over here? Oh, mate, that's that's an assortment of, of Hungarian delights. Cabbage dumplings. I mean, it tastes good going down, Ooh. but the smell after could choke a donkey. <laughs> that's why they were so good in battle. That could choke a donkey. Donkey. And they, you wouldn't mess with them. The Even Hungarians. stink could see that it stinks. Yeah, exactly. It's like a swamp in here. It smells like a bad swamp. It's a quagmire of. We've got paprika over there. A lot of paprika. If one thing the Hungarians know is paprika, mm. and, and what's there, there's always sausage related and there's a lot of sausage in Hungary. Yeah. Got a lot of great cured meats. Mm. Oh, the small goods. They know how to hang up meat and dry it. Don't they just? Small goods experts. Thank you, Hungary. And thank you, Mrs. Luke. Next How long mom. did it make? It must have taken forever to make that. 45 sp- minutes, all of it. The whole lot. The whole lot. To cure that meat, she to smoke it. She killed the meat in 45 it. minutes. She's got, a, she she's got an the, express cure. The deer. She killed the deer. <laughs> she cured it, smoked it, hung it, prepared it in 45 she minutes. She didn't cure it of um, the leg it lost. <laughs> no. No. It's still she hopping that around. leg up. <laughs> It's still hopping around outside. <laughs> that makes sense. But she is dynamo in the kitchen. Mm. Thanks, Luke's mum. You are a sweetheart. Thanks, mum. Well, I hope you're hungry. Mm. Get it? <clears throat> right. Uh, okay, speaking of which, uh, that's the next race. Join us in a couple of days' time for the wrap-up of the Hungary podcast and get hold of us for comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Say hi to your mum for us. Effing one podcast, number one. Uh, Twitter page, thanks, Luke. We'll see you after Hungary. Love conquers all. Love conquers all, you douchebag. You're a douche canoe.